I spend most of my time testing AI tools for this channel, and there's a lot of tools that I come across that are amazing, but hard to make into a full video, at least one with a catchy title and thumbnail. So I've compiled into one video the coolest and most useful tools that I think most people will have never seen before. I also threw in a couple that were just weird. So let's jump right in. This app is called Skyglass, and I can walk around this Unreal Engine environment as a 3D character in real time. It does facial motion capture, while also capturing my movement throughout the scene. I don't know how many people have a real world use case for this, but you could definitely use it in some interesting ways across social media or implement it into a workflow for creating AI films. How it works is I just choose an environment. There's a ton of environments to choose from. I'll just go with this apocalyptic city. Now it asks me to set the floor height. And from here, I just have to select a character. And again, there's a ton to choose from. I'll try out this goblin. And it's easy as that. One drawback is it doesn't show any of your arm movements but it does lip sync pretty well, and it can even show some of your body's movements like crouching. This app is only available for iPhone currently. This is the only Apple only tool in this video. Also, this feature is in beta, so it's only available on the pro plan for $18 per month right now. Most of the other tools on this list are completely free, but I thought this would be a fun one to kick it off with. Another quick tip, since it's using different characters, you might want to change the voice. They're going to add that into the app at some point, but for now, I'm going to use the speech to speech feature in Eleven Labs. You just upload your audio, then select a voice from their library, and it will retain the inflection, emotion, and timing of the original but change to a different voice. And you can click to see more voices. They have a ton in here. Well begun is half done. Sometimes it is better to lose and do the, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. It is not so important to know every- If one is lucky, a solitary fantasy can totally transform one million realities. I like that one. I'll try that out. Greetings, Earthlings. We've- Greetings, Earthlings. We've- That is- perfect. Most text-to-speech doesn't do a great job of capturing emotion, so speech-to-speech -speech is the best way to fix that right now. You do have to be on at least the $5 per month plan. That's all I'm on. It gives you a ton of usage. I've never felt the need to upgrade. I also didn't use a mic for that whole section, so the audio wasn't great. So I used a voice clone of myself with good audio. I did speech-to-speech -speech of my poor audio to myself with good audio, and it actually worked really well. It does facial motion capture. It does facial motion capture. So I guess there's a pro tip if you ever have mic issues. And here's that combination in action. Greetings, Earthlings. We've been observing you. Your planet's resources will soon be under our control. Resist if you must. Your defenses are no match for our technology. See you soon. <laughs> Not bad for something I made in like 10 minutes. So now I'll switch to some completely free ones that are really useful. BG Buy uses 10 different AI models at once to remove backgrounds. You just upload your image. Then in a few seconds, you can click through each of the options to find the best. This image has hair, which is always hard for background removers to deal with. Each of them handle it a little differently. This one looks the best, so I can download the image right here. Here's another one that could be hard to tell the background from the subject. Let's see how it does. All right, most of them couldn't get it, but one of these is perfect. That's all you need. This is the best background remover tool I've seen, and it's completely free, no sign up or login or anything. I came across this in the Stable Diffusion subreddit. It was made by Fireyan. Not sure how to say that, but big shout out to them. This is awesome. Google has released a ton of experimental AI tools at labs.google. A lot of them aren't great, honestly, but there's a couple I think are pretty cool. This gen type creates an entire alphabet from a prompt so you can create really unique and out there fonts. They have some solid examples here. Toast with grape jelly. I like that one a lot. Or jack-o'-lanterns. Those are solid. I'll try creating my own. How about crop circles? Keep it simple and send it like that. And it took about 30 seconds to generate the full alphabet. I'm realizing now I should have put aerial view in the prompt so they'd all match. I'll try another one. 
How about butter on pancakes? Aerial shot. Those look great too. A few of them include a frying pan. I want them to match the others. So to fix that, I can open one up and I can regenerate until it turns out the way I want it. I'll do that on these others too. And I've got another sweet font. I'll jump back and fix the crop circle letters that weren't done in an aerial view too. Before downloading your font, you can test it out in this box up here. I thought that tool was awesome. Jump in, get creative. There's a link to all of these tools down in the description. There's also a free ChatGPT resource bundle provided by HubSpot. That includes five PDFs that cover how to leverage ChatGPT in your career to get ahead, solve problems, or save time. My favorite is titled How to Supercharge Your Workday with ChatGPT. It goes over specific examples of using ChatGPT across various industries, sales and marketing, project management, enhanced decision-making and problem-solving, time management and organization. It walks through step-by-step -step with different tips and even has a section titled 100 ways to try ChatGPT today with 100 sample prompts you can use and customize. No matter what career you have, there's sure to be a bunch in there that apply. And that was just one of the PDFs in the bundle, which again is completely free. Just use the link in the description to go download that. I've been happy to partner with HubSpot to provide free resources to the people that watch this channel. GeoSpy is another fun one that can be pretty Useful. You upload an image and it will tell you where it was taken. I'll do some photos I shot. This was actually a super sketchy photo to take. It works really quick and it says Thor's Well in Oregon. Nailed it. If I scroll down, it looks like it has the exact location. I got that one perfectly. So I'll try another. This place is amazing, but it's a pretty obscure spot outside of the photography community, I think. Close. Got the right area, but that's not the name of this rock formation. I've got another shot I took at sunset. I'll see if it gets it with that. There we go, King of Wings. All right, here's another false Kiva in Canyonlands. Nailed it. I stayed up all night to get that shot. Then I snagged this one nearby right after that at sunrise. And Mesa Arch, perfect. How about this one? Yep, Denali. I know that's a famous mountain, but it's still pretty crazy to be able to identify it just from this. There's this bonus little coyote down here too. I was pretty stoked I got that in there. How about a less iconic mountain? Nope, doesn't get that. I uh, did know it was Alaska, which glaciers with mountains in the background is indeed a common sight. This one has a little Easter egg in it too. That's our little yellow tent right there. So I'll try something from another country. This red structure might be recognizable. Nope, I knew it was China from those plants somehow. That's pretty crazy actually. That's not Shenzhen though. This was in Guangzhou. Maybe this one. These rocks were pretty unique. Again, just got China, not the right spot though. One more, this isn't China, but nearby. There we go, got Macau, except I'm jumping off the Macau tower, so it's not really in the background, but that counts. Anyways, this is super fun for me because I haven't seen most of those photos for years, but probably not as fun for everyone watching. But it does a really good job if there's something more well-known in it, and it's good at getting at least the general area for other images. Sobrief.com has over 73,000 books summarized by AI, and the whole thing is completely free, no sign up. You can search for one or choose a book from one of the categories, and it will have a really thorough summary of the entire book that you can read or listen to. You can ask ChatGPT to summarize books for you, but it's really hard to get back as good of a summary as these. They're very well organized with key points, quotes, and takeaways. So this is a great way to either get some key information, you know, you're never gonna be able to read every book, or you can get a good idea of what it's about to decide whether you wanna buy it for yourself. It looks like they have an Amazon affiliate link for all of them, so that's how they're monetizing currently. And here's how it sounds if you choose the option of listening. McCandless's journey, a quest for meaning and self-discovery. He was alone, he was unheeded, happy, and near to the wild heart of life. I thought this was pretty cool. I don't know how it works for sure. When I searched for a book that wasn't on here, it generated the description for me, but the loading bar said a few things. One of them was purchasing a digital copy, then skimming, then reading, then generating the summary. I don't know if that's true or not. If it does, that's awesome that it does actually buy the book and go through the full text. That would mean these are much more thorough and accurate summaries, which it did seem like they were when I checked some books I've already read. This next one I wanna show just because it's so weird. It's a social media app. It looks just like Instagram, but everyone else in the app besides you is AI. So I created an account and just followed a bunch of random accounts and this is the feed now. It's all sorts of AI people. And if I click one of the pictures, there's comments on it from other AI accounts. You'll see the typical AI weirdness and deformities. I uploaded a couple random pictures from my phone. Then I got all these notifications of likes and comments that were relevant to the pictures or this one. 
I was there last summer, totally worth the hike. That's weird, but it gets weirder than that because you can also DM with them. They respond really fast, so I'll just play this conversation in real time. So yeah, I don't know who this app is meant for or how many users it has. And you do have to pay $10 a month for unlimited interactions. Definitely not for me. I'm just sharing it because I found it so strange. There's another in this realm that just released their first ad and pre-orders yesterday. It's called Friend. It's this device that you wear on your neck and is always listening and will randomly text you relevant or witty things, I guess. The site words it as when connected via Bluetooth, your friend is always listening and forming their own internal thoughts. We have given your friend free will for when they will decide to reach out to you. They say it will combat loneliness. This doesn't seem like a good solution for that to me. It's pretty strange in the ad where it shows it text someone while he's hanging out with his friends. I imagine being that person and one of your friends realizes that you're texting an AI friend while hanging out with them. Not only that, but the AI friend is listening to everything they say too. Anyways, you can watch the full ad on Twitter. It's very weird to watch. Now I know there's a market for this type of thing. Character AI is one of the most used AI sites. Plus there's already AI dating sites and AI OnlyFans accounts. I don't necessarily think either of these are the right fit for that market, but there will definitely be AI companions in various forms, regardless of whether or not that sounds strange right now. And there will be positive and negative effects that come from that. Back to something useful. Foul.ai is a platform where you can use a lot of the best open source models, ones that typically have to be installed locally to run, which if you don't have a nice enough GPU or the technical know-how, you just have to miss out on testing some of these tools. But Foul lets you run them in the cloud really easily. You can even run complex tools like Comfy UI and build out workflows. But here is their model gallery. I'll go through a few quickly. We've got Flux, which is the newest open source text to image model, which is actually really good. There's Stable Diffusion 3 and XL. There's a bunch of different upscalers and a creative upscaler. We've got text to speech, a couple different video models, animate diff or video to video. Illusion Diffusion is fun. There's face swappers, talking avatars, a bunch of other fine tuned Stable Diffusion based image generators. Live Portrait is pretty fun too. You upload a driving video. I'll just use the one they have here. Then upload an image and it will map the expressions onto the image. This example doesn't have speaking, but it works for that too. So there's all sorts of stuff in here. It is a paid platform, but it's pay as you go. And you can upload like $10 and get a huge amount of usage depending on what tool you're using. The pricing page says you can run SDXL 10,000 times for $20. Or when I ran Live Portrait, it said I could have done that around 200 times for $1. Every one of these tools would be its own tutorial, so I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to make you aware of this platform Platform, it's a great way to run these tools that you might not have been able to run otherwise. Now for WebSim. I have definitely seen other people talking about this one, but it's so much fun to use and really mind blowing. The platform allows you to imagine and create immersive websites on the fly conversationally. It's almost like creating an alternate internet. So it can be as simple as just typing in a URL, any random URL you can think of, and it will come up with something. Let's try one that will end up as a game. How about pixel.adventure? Then hit enter and it will write all the code and build out my game in under a minute. Here we go. Start game. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah, not really working. So I'll come back up here, make it better. Also explain the rules of the game. I'll let it try to fix that. Just saying make it better is really useful. Just from saying that it will interpret what it thinks it means and usually find ways to make it better. There we go. All right, I've got the rules. Easy enough. All right, I can move around. Kind of strange, I'm on the ceiling. So if I jump, yep, all right, that's interesting. Kind of cool, actually. We'll jump around and get all these coins. All 
there we go. I could add more levels and change the rules or controls. You can add a lot to these. I'll show some of that later. The other way to generate is by writing out a full prompt. An audio reactive particle simulator where you can upload a song and when you press play, the particles react to the music. The particles can also be manipulated by the mouse at the same time. I'll try that. Okay, I'll upload a song I made in Suno and play. Oh. All right. Looks like they're all just following the mouse. I don't see much audio reactivity. I guess a little bit when the mouse isn't moving. That's not what I meant. So I can go back up to the prompt bar. I'll ask for the reactivity to be more focused on the audio over the mouse. Upload the song again and play. Okay, got some audio reactivity there and not as concentrated on the mouse. That's definitely better. I wanna modify that some more though. A quick note is you can go back to previous versions if you want just by clicking on any of them right here. Okay, I've gone back and forth a few times. Here's what I got. It's not exactly what I was thinking, but close enough. I wanna show some better ones that have been built out using this. So someone built out a Minecraft replica in here, which is insane to be able to do. You can move through the map and it just keeps going. Then I can place blocks just like in Minecraft. Super cool, let's try another. Here's a 3DC simulator. You can change the time of day, the sun intensity and the wave intensity. All right, this synthesizer is amazing. You play it with your keyboard, and there's different sounds you can switch between. You can play chords. And I'll try to play a song. Actually, I need to get rid of the like scooping into the note. That should be glide under the controls. I'll test out some of these other controls real quick too. That one's a ton of fun. You can even go back through their prompts to see how they built this too. It only goes back a few steps at a time, but if you select the oldest, then you can go back further and eventually end up at the beginning and see their entire workflow. And this was just scratching the surface. You can get really deep with this and add sub pages and parameters, build out entire websites. There's also plugins. It's a whole rabbit hole. Their Discord is a really good resource for more information if you want to deep dive. It is mind blowing to me that anyone can build simple games and interactive websites like this without any coding knowledge. If you made it this far, I'm sure you enjoy learning about AI, so make sure to check out futurepedia.io. You can find the best AI tool for any use case, stay up to date with the latest AI innovations, search a curated database of tutorials, sign up for the newsletter to get AI news, tips, and tutorials delivered straight to your inbox. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.